Mercado Fitness TV, The Fitness Business Channel. Hi, my name is uh, Ray Algar. I'm the Managing Director of Oxygen Consulting, um, which is a UK um, strategy firm. I think um, I was at dinner uh, last night actually and um, people were, were asking me how how would you sum up low cost and what are the, the most important uh, elements of it? And I, There's a couple of words that always um, spin around my head when people ask me that question and, um, and one is simplicity. I, I, think, um, I think what um, and why the low cost movement seems to be growing globally is, the, is this whole essence that now uh, the fitness industry has a proposition which consumers can very very quickly understand it's a very simple proposition uh, uh, simplicity runs um, run, runs through every element of the low cost uh, experience that um, yes you have to put buildings in the right place but but then what you do with those buildings now is, is so more simple. We no longer have to think about building swimming pools and tennis courts. That It's just creating a, a really fantastic gym machine experience and, and then executing that well. The pricing policy is, is simpler to understand. Um, uh, the websites are simpler to use. There's a lot of technology, but, but the core sort of theme that runs through all of that is that uh, at the end of the day, it's it's a, a simple to understand proposition which is why I think consumers are getting quite excited uh, uh, about it um, but below that concept of simplicity also lies um, sophistication it's it's it the analogy I, I would use is if you think of a, a beautiful swan that at the top of the swan is, is very graceful and elegant and it's swimming in the water very slowly and calmly but underneath there could be lots and lots of activity and I, I think if you're creating a great low cost experience what you want the consumer to see is, is all the elegance and the simplicity at the top but, but I think when you actually start digging down inside the business those that execute low cost really really well there is a lot of sophistication that runs um, um, through it. Um, I'd also like to clarify what, what I mean by, you know, how would I define a, a, an authentic, um, an original low cost business? And um, when I first um, put this question to myself in about 2009, when I was writing the first UK report, we had no definition really of what a low cost gym was. And, and this created confusion because some people um, would say, well, uh, that gym over there has just lowered its prices, therefore is that a low cost gym? And, and they would kind of miss the point that that's just a gym lowering its prices, that's not necessarily a low cost gym built up from a blank sheet of paper. Um, and so the definition that I put forward for the UK market was we, when thinking is this a low cost gym or is it not, does it have the following characteristics? And some of them could be applied internationally, but in respect to the UK, the characteristics that I put forward in terms of does this meet the definition of low cost is, is one, in terms of pricing, um, is the price at least 50% or lower than the country average price? So let me give you an example. In the UK, to belong to a private uh, gym academy would cost about £44 sterling, which I, I would guess is around about 50 US dollars per month. And so in my definition of a true low-cost gym in the UK, their pricing would be set at 25 uh, dollars um, at least, so at least a 50% discount on the national average and sometimes as high as 70 or even 80% on the national country average. Uh, the other characteristic we have in the UK is low cost gyms operate 24 hours a day. It's quite unusual because when I've looked at the, the model in other countries they haven't really embraced 24 hours but we have in the UK so um, again most low cost gyms, not all of them in the UK but most would be operating 24 hours a day because that, that is an efficient use of the building. Um, they also use m massive amounts of technology in the web because the whole proposition of an authentic low cost gym is self-service. That's a key thing for people to understand. We, we want consumers to be doing more um, and by consumers doing more, staff are doing less and if staff are doing less then you need less staff, the costs of the business can be driven down and then passed on in terms of a great price for the consumer. So the other part of my characteristic um, 
my definition in the UK is that um, can, in fact it was quite an ambitious um, characteristic because it said can this business potentially be run with just one member of staff and in the UK I could take you to low cost gyms that can operate 24 hours per day with just one member of staff. They might not do it but they have the capability of doing it because it's a very sophisticated technology driven uh, business with the emphasis on consumers helping themselves, self-serving. I think the other word that springs to mind is consistency. Um, one of the challenges I think when I think about how the UK health club industry is developed in the UK for example is that um, there's been a lot of innovation uh, that's gone on, uh, especially in terms of, of hardware. But with innovation also I think comes complexity. Um, Yes, it's great that machines are changing and improving and being updated and new types of swimming pools and tennis courts and services, new facilities are being added all, all the time and, and that's done with good intentions. Operators are saying we're providing consumers with more, but the counter um, argument is that consumers are having to understand something that now becomes more complex and so that contrasts strongly with the, the idea of a low-cost gym because what they provide is just so simple it's just a great machine experience it's a big gym filled with the best quality equipment you can buy and why is it best quality it's, they justify paying more because they're all about efficiency the, the, the machines must work all the time consistently and so that's another word that I, I use when I think about well-run, organised, low-cost businesses is they're incredibly consistent in delivery. The member experience, what the member gets on Monday is very similar to what the member would get on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. When we think of larger, more complex clubs, the service experience can vary so wildly, even on the same day. It can be great at 10 o'clock in the morning and it changes at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I, I get a strong sense that low cost gyms, because what they do is much simpler and it's a much narrower experience, I think they can deliver consistency much more often than with some of the larger, more established uh, clubs as well. Well, I've, I've been doing um, quite a lot of, of research around the, the low cost consumer. Um, I'm just in the process of finishing off um, a large study where we actually had um, we were given the opportunity of, of interviewing uh, by email um, 150,000 um, consumers, both um, that have left the low-cost gyms and who are still studying in it. Now, of those 150,000 surveys that were sent out, I've, I've had 14,000 um, completed, and I mean I've been in the process of analysing um, uh, the, the data, and you now we're finding some quite interesting things. There are um, in terms of their uh, loyalty to the business, I would, I would say it's, it's really, really high. When, when, we t when we ask them questions such as, would you recommend this simple low-cost gym experience to your friends and family, the scores are really, really high. If you think of on a scale of 0 to 10, uh, 0 I would not recommend and 10 I would. We, I've, over the last couple of years, consistently seen scores of 8, 9s, 9.5. So, you know, very, very high scores that that gyms charging three, four, five times more per month would dream of having a recommendation rates as high as some low-cost uh, gyms. Um, but we also have to remember that self-service is, no, is not going to be for everyone. And so I've also found in my research that when you ask or look at how long people stay, there are groups of people that um, that become comfortable with low-cost self-service very quickly and stay for many months or even years but there's also quite significant groups of people that come and try perhaps because of the price is so low but they very quickly are leaving within three months they, they've left and some of them leave the industry completely and some of the consumers might trade up or try a different kind of exercise experience. So what I, I take from that is that um, the low cost experience is, is not going to be for all consumers. Um, just like um, not all consumers want full service upscale health clubs. So it, it's more about personalization I, I, I guess. Um, 
I've also, one of the questions I like to ask people is their future intentions as well. So a question I would, I would often ask is, what's, how likely are you still going to hear using this low cost gym in three months or six months time? And again, when I've asked that question, their future intention, will you still be here in three or six months, has, has also on this scale of zero to 10, also been consistently high. So these people, those people that get comfortable with low cost, you can see them staying in low cost. In the research that I've done, clubs that are at higher price points can't just sit and wait and expect people to come through a low cost gym and then trade up. We find in other industries, consumers are sometimes trading up, but sometimes trading down. You know, in the presentation we did this morning, I, I used the phenomenon of cross shopping and what I mean by cross shopping is that if you had a basket of things that you buy and when we, if we were to analyse those basket of things, whether it be a hotel, an airline ticket, clothing, food, you would find that in that basket some might be low cost brands and some might be premium brands. So you have a, a cross section of shopping going on and I've, I, I've, I think in, especially in Europe this phenomenon of trading up and trading down is very, very prevalent now. It's a trend that, that's growing and I see no reason why Latin American consumers wouldn't behave or, or at least be thinking in the same way. Not just of low cost gyms but of low cost um, airlines and uh, low cost cars. In fact, when I've looked in the past at any industry, any product category, low cost is growing. Take mobile phones for example. Um, yes, a lot of us now walk around with smartphones but one of the fasting growing segments in uh, the telephone, mobile telephone industry is that are actually simple low cost phones. You know, if you think of the billion consumers in India, uh, yes some of them might be, um, be able to afford uh, an iPhone 5 when it comes out next month, but the vast majority of people just need access to good communications. So that's why we're seeing big growth in the low cost um, cell phone mobile market. Low cost is, is growing, um, growing everywhere. Um, and I think what you have, Guillermo, is this uh, concept of what I would describe as, as savvy shopping. And I think that translates into uh, Spanish and Portuguese. Savvy, I would just say, is uh, shoppers are just being really wise and smart and intelligent. And therefore, if you can provide a great low cost experience, then I think it's fair to assume that some smart, intelligent, savvy consumers would respond really well to that. Yeah, um, if we were to uh, look at how you build up the uh, costs for a, a low cost gym business, now clearly I, I don't have access to uh, precise numbers because the, the, the numbers that people pay for property is, is um, if you like, uh, it's a competitive secret. You don't really want to start spreading that level of information in the public domain. But um, if we think about the fact that by definition, this is a low-cost business. So everything, every decision um, that's made uh, has to be carefully um, uh, c uh, con considered. So, because one of the key things is that this needs to be an efficient, sustainable business. People often ask me, does is low cost a sustainable long-term business model and it, it clearly is because if you look at brands like McFit in Germany and, and probably McFit invented the idea of a low-cost gym when they opened uh, the German entrepreneur Rainer Schaller opened the first uh, McFit gym in um, uh, 1997 that brand now has been operating for 15 years so it, it is a sustainable. It is a sustainable business. You know, there's uh, people shouldn't be thinking that this is a trend that's not going to be growing um, and gaining more, more momentum. It is. Planet Fitness in the States has been trading for 15 years or more with the low cost model and, and was operating um, be, before that. Now, um, in the global low cost report that I, I did, I, I I had access to some of the profitability numbers for. Um, for uh, Planet Fitness because what's interesting about Planet Fitness is it's a franchise driven business and franchises in uh, North America come under a lot of scrutiny. You're, you're asking people, business people, to invest a lot of money 
uh, to become a Planet Fitness franchisee. And because of that, um, US regulations are quite strict. You have to disclose quite a lot about how the business operates and so some of the key financial metrics around the business. Um, and so um, for those people that are interested in understanding the, the financial dyna dynamics around one of the world's largest uh, low-cost gym brands, I'd, I'd suggest you just uh, search for the franchise document. It's called a franchise disclosure document for Planet Fitness. Uh, you might be asked to pay a small fee or you might find it on the web for free but but in there one of the the measures uh, that they actually disclose is the uh, the underlying profitability of a typical um, Planet Fitness gym. Now, a Planet Fitness off, 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 uh, uh, operate both franchise units, so therefore operated by other people, but they also operate owned clubs as well. When we looked at the profitability for these low-cost gyms, and, and remember Planet Fitness are selling memberships, monthly memberships, for as low as 10 US dollars. And a lot of the people will be thinking, can the business be viable, profitable, when you're selling memberships for 10 US dollars per month. But if you look at the underlying earnings, so what's known as the uh, earnings before interest depreciation uh, and amortization EBITDA, the EBITDA measures are, are phenomenally high. They were ranging, when we, I looked in the um, disclosure document, they were ranging between 39% EBITDA up to f as high as 54% uh, EBITDA. Now, Ursa um, publish a lot of uh, financial uh, metrics on, on traditional uh, clubs, full service clubs, middle market clubs and, and believe me, um, operators in other segments would die for uh, profitability levels, EBITDA levels of you know 54% uh, or more so. So I think people need to be convinced that this low cost model when executed, operated well is sustainable over a long term. As we've started to understand more about low cost, there's, there's also I think a responsibility to, um, to continue the story. How I characterise this is I, I think there's two parts to this story. The, the story that I tell a lot at conferences around the world is I, I tell the story of how low cost is growing and, and it's an exciting, compelling story. But the second part of that story really is, is, and we touched on this in the presentation today, is, is how do you respond at a strategic, at a business level? And, and the, that's a really, really important question because just because something is gaining momentum, just because a, a trend, a new innovation comes along, you, you have the opportunity of either embracing that, joining it, or taking your business off in a different direction. And so um, I think it's necessary for people to start thinking about, do I, let me first understand how these low cost gyms are innovating. And once I understand, now let me think about what my long term response, my business's long term response will be. Is this something I want to imitate, to copy, or, or do I see my business on a completely different path, a, a, a path that is not connected to low cost? Mercado Fitness TV, The Fitness Business Channel.